Hi everyone, Dr. Sue here. This is part three of a three-part series on intro to sutures. This last video here, I'm gonna be showing you how to do an interrupted suture and a continuous sling suture. And I'll show you how to tie the knot. For this video, I will be demonstrating suturing with a Castro Viego, or Castro for short, instead of a traditional needle driver. So if you like to follow along, I have the following instruments ready. So you will need a model of some sort. And if you don't have a model, what I would recommend is that if you have a banana lying around, you can grab a banana and grab a blade and just create an incision into the banana and that way you can approximate that wound later. Next, you can have a Castro. If you don't have one of these, a traditional needle driver is also possible to use. Next, you'll need a pair of forceps of some kind. So I actually have two here and this one has a very thin pointy end to give more precision and control, usually used for microsurgery. And this one actually has these guides along the ends where it guides the suture needle through. For today, I'm going to be using these ones. And you will also need a pair of scissors. And lastly, you'll need a suture. And today we're gonna to be using a 4.0 chromic gut. The needle size is 19 millimeters and I've already pre-opened this, but if the outer package is not sterile and the inner package is also not sterile. So when you grab this, what you can do is you'll take this tear right here and you just give it a nice tear and pass the inner package to somebody who's already scrubbed in. So when they grab the inside, it is sterile and you just pull the inner package out and discard the outer package. So the design of this package is actually quite clever. What you do is you take your needle driver, whether it's a Castro or a traditional needle driver, and instead of pulling out the needle right away, this is actually designed so that you can put your instrument and grip the needle at exactly where it should be gripped, which is about a two thirds of the way down from the tip of the needle. So if you press into this package and click with your needle driver, you can actually pull out the suture and have it held exactly where you want it to be held, okay? And with the Castro, how you open and close the end is that you press once to lock the tip and you press it again to release and open. So this, it allows you to have more control and the, the force of doing this, of clicking, is actually not as strong uh, as the force required with the traditional needle driver, okay? So we're gonna open this needle driver, this Castro, and then go ahead and grab the end two thirds from the end here. And what you can do now is just pull out this suture. So this is a very long suture. This is about 27 um, inches long and you may not need all this. And if you don't need all this, then what you can do is you can take a pair of scissors and just shorten it a bit and then discard the end. Next, you want to have your model. And with the model, you can reposition the needles if you need to. There we go. So you always want to hold it where the body of the needle is, not the very end, because that end is actually rounded and it will slip. So let's grip the needle again. And then let's create a interrupted knot. 
So using your forcep as a guide to stabilize the suture, we're suturing this area here to here. So we want to close the wound just like this. So if you have a piece of tissue that is more loose than the other one, you want to enter the wound with the, on the looser side of the, uh, of the, the tissue. What you can do is hold it right where the tissue is more loose. And when you want to enter the wound with a suture, you want to be entering at a perpendicular angle. So you don't want to angle it up. You want the tip of the needle to go perpendicular to the actual wound itself. And the entry point, if this is the wound, you want to be about three millimeters away from the wound edge. And that will give you enough tissue to uh, to create a stable wound. Okay, so you're entering perpendicular to the wound. And as you're halfway there, what you can do now is you can either decide to follow through all the way to the other side and come out about three millimeters out, or if this is not possible or you don't have um, enough needle length to do that, what you can do is come out part way, halfway, bring it up, readjust so pull this through so you'll do it in two bites is what we say and pull through so that you have approximately about three to four milli uh, centimeters of end left okay and then what you want to do is readjust the needle holder onto the needle and then come on out the other side again, three millimeters from the wound edge, and then go ahead and grab the needle. So this is quite important, is that when you're grabbing the needle to pull through, you do not want to be grabbing the tip of the needle because that is the cutting end and it will blunt the cutting end and it will make your suturing more difficult with subsequent punctures. So go ahead and pull that right through. And then here we have the suture going right through to both tissues. Okay, now to tie the knot, a common mistake is that people often leave the other end, the short end, too long. And this makes it quite difficult to tie the knot. So pull it through such that you have about three to four centimeters long here. And at this point, you can either drop the needle onto the patient's bib, or you also have the choice of holding on to this needle here to protect it and twirling it around your hand, and that will keep it nice and clean and stable, okay? Or you can choose to just drop it and hold the suture about a hand's width away from the wound and so that you have enough slack to be able to uh, do your, your tying of the knot, okay? So how we tie the knot is you are going to do the first throw in one direction and you wanna wrap the suture around the needle driver, the castro, in two throws and then with the end, grab the free end and pull it through. So pause here. So you wanna see where your needle and your knot is going because what you wanna create at this point is a square knot. And if I pull it this way, the knot is actually not square. So I need to reposition and adjust my hand so that the knot is actually square. See, if I pull my hands in the opposite direction, you can see that the knot lays flat and is easy for me now to just settle the knot down on the wound. And what I would recommend is that just to pull it, that actual knot itself, away from the edge of the wound so that it's not irritating it, okay? And then so here we let go of that suture end and we do the second knot to secure that because right now it's still a slippery knot, okay? And then so the next row 
First throw I did was in this direction towards me. The next throw is going to be in the opposite direction to secure the knot. And this is away from me. Okay, and that, now I'm only looping once. I'm holding on to the end and again, in the opposite direction, now you see a square knot and that will lay flat onto the first knot there. So that's quite secure. I would recommend doing a last knot here. And again, now in the opposite direction from the second knot and the second knot, I threw it this way. And then so the last one, I will throw the loop towards me again. And then again, we'll grab the suture end and opposite direction and to create a square knot and then tie it. There we are. So that knot is very secure. At this point, if you're working with an assistant, they can cut the needle suture for you or you can do it yourself. So you want to leave about three millimeters from the knot itself so that if there's movement or if there's um, any moisture in here that the knot doesn't slip and unwind. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cut that. So there you are, that is an interrupted suture. This will be very useful for a lot of different surgeries. It's a, it's a simple suture and, a, and it's a very secure one. Now that you learned the interrupted suture, I'm going to be showing you now the continuous sling suture. So this one is quite useful for longer wounds where you don't want to make multiple interrupted knots along there and you just want to make one uh, continuous suture. So first you start off similarly to the other suture where you enter with the needle about three millimeters from the wound edge and either in a single pass or in two passes. If you want to do it in two pass, you go through right through the middle here first um, and we'll do it in a single pass this time. So you go, you enter and you exit about three millimeters from the wound's edge. Uh, pull through the needle and the suture until you're about three to four centimeters from the wound's edge. So you don't want to leave this loose end too short because it can pull through accidentally and you also don't want to leave it too long because it's quite hard to grab to tie your knot. So here we're going to do our first knot. In a forward direction I'm going to do two throws around my castro, grab the end of this suture and in opposite directions make sure I have a square knot before I settle that knot down to the wound. Okay, so where the center of your knot will be right now is along the wound's edge. I'm gonna go ahead and move that to the buckle so that the I, so that the uh, the knot is not uh, accumulating debris along the, in the edge of the wound. And then in the opposite direction, we'll do one throw and again, grab the end of the suture and in opposite directions, ensure that you have a square knot before you settle that knot down to the first and that will secure that first knot now. It's no longer slipping, okay? And then we're gonna do a last throw in the opposite direction and we will grab the end and again, in the opposite direction, pull through that square knot and settle that. So now this, First knot is very secure. And then what you wanna do is now grab your scissors and instead of cutting both threads, you're only gonna cut the shorter end and leave about three to four millimeters from the wound edge. Discard the end. Okay, so we're gonna do the next entry point is about three millimeters from the first entry point. So again, in one swoop, we're gonna go right through the lingual, about three millimeters out. And then instead of pulling the needle through right now, you'll see a loop that you've created with your suture. Put your needle driver right in the middle and hold on to the body of the suture, the needle, and pull it through that knot. 
And what this does is that it creates some tension along the wound from this knot to this knot, okay? And we'll go ahead and tighten that right there. And we'll move this out of the way, okay? And then you continue this continuous suture by again entering and exiting about three millimeters from the wound's edge. And then through the knot and through the loop rather, grab the needle and pull it through and settle that down. Okay. And we'll continue this along the edge of this wound. And it is useful to actually keep this end taut so that the knot doesn't come loose here. Okay, and then we're gonna go and enter and exit about three millimeters from the wound's edge and pull it through the knot and settle that knot on the buckle. And let's do a few more bites before we tie. So check your suture length along the way. If you are approaching the end of that length, make sure you leave enough room at the end so that you can actually tie it. So secure that loop and grab onto your needle again and go ahead and put that right through. Okay, and through the loop of the, of the thread, pull that needle right through. Okay, and secure that knot into place right on the buckle. Okay, so let's do two more. Okay, so we're gonna put this one right through here and grab that, secure it, and hold this end taut, and then let's tie it off now, okay? So we're gonna do the final bite, where, how we usually do it, and then exit, but instead of pulling it through the loop this time, we're gonna actually hold on to the body of the needle, pull it all the way through, and just hold on to the loop so that it's a bit secure, and leave about two to three millimeters of the loop unpulled, okay? So now we're gonna tie this knot like how you did initially with the, with the first knot there. Okay, so two throws forward and grab the middle of this knot right here, secure that, and again, hands in opposite directions so that you create that square knot and you settle that knot, see the square knot, you settle that knot down and that's on the edge of the wound, so we're gonna move it to the buckle. Okay, and one throw in the opposite direction to secure that first knot so it doesn't slip and in pull it in the opposite direction. And now that's pretty secure. So we're gonna do one last throw in the opposite direction of the first one and pull that square knot down. Okay, so now you can trim the end of your suture. So now you can cut all three of these strands you can leave about three to three to four millimeters from the wound's edge, and it's better to leave longer than shorter, because if you cut shorter, this knot will become loose and you'll lose this whole suture. Okay, so about this long. If you accidentally cut it too long, you can always trim it back, but this is a continuous sling suture where you can see that there's even tension distributed along the wound's edge and it's approximating it well, and that will give the wound a nice stable um, security during healing. This concludes part three of three of my introductory to suturing video series. Uh, I hope you found it useful. I'm Dr. Quinn Sue, and thank you for joining me. See you next time.